Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over Caps' Yasuo, some runes on the screen for you here. I think Yasuo, especially after the buff, is actually pretty decent in solo queue. Although that being said, like, I do think he's more of a counter pick. Like, for example, this game, he's got the Diana and the Rikan. And especially in competitive play, Yasuo exists kind of pretty much only for Diana. You know, like, Yasuo is always played with Diana and not really without it. Um, but if you can get, like, a comp in solo queue where the enemy team doesn't really have like that reliable CC to deal with you. Like if you look at this game, right? Um, there's not really many champs on the enemy team that have a good way of dealing with you. And to be honest, Yasuo has a pretty good lane phase into Silas as well. I think Yasuo generally like wins extended trades versus pretty much most other melee champs, unless you're versus like Fiora or Jax, like the really, really good extended trade champions. But against most mid laners, um, you, will do you will definitely win the extended trades. So in this sort of lane, uh, I think you can likely look to take a lot of those. The only thing you really need to be scared of is like some of the short trade Silas can do against you. Also, you need to be a little bit careful of jungle ganks. Like we've got Lee Sin versus Diana, so Diana is probably going to be farming a bit more than Lee Sin. So that's something we kind of have to be aware of. But let's see, because they don't have like that guaranteed gank set up. You know, it's not like a LeBlanc or, you know, Lissandra or something that has like really, really good gank set up. So it looks like... um. Probably gonna push this wave, I'm thinking, or it could just keep it in the middle. Um, but I think he's safe to push it, honestly. I don't think Lee will look for a gank here in the early game. And also, Silas is quite weak at level 1 versus Yasuo. So you can see he's like playing really well. If you watch my laning guide, this will be very familiar to you. Like standing in line with the creep that your opponent wants to CS and making it difficult for him. You can look for autos or cues when they go for it. Or if they use a skill like this, it's really, really good. So, places a really early ward. Uh, kind of interesting. Don't really think it was necessary, honestly, but like the way is gonna push back to him, so he doesn't really need to save it either. So it's, it's kind of whatever. And better better too early than, than too late, obviously. This wave comes in. Don't think he can do anything here. I think this is where he could look for a deeper ward if he hadn't used it, because you can see, like, even though he's looking to kind of pressure here, you don't really get anything off it. Like, out of all that, he only got one Q. And I think that definitely could have been an opportunity to get a deeper ward. Uh, which would have made him a bit safer or get some knowledge on Lee Sin for the rest of his team. So here it can keep pressuring Silas. You can see it's sort of hard for Silas to, to trade on the Yasuo, honestly. Like, you kind of just... You honestly just, like, win trades against him. One thing that's, like, pretty important to note about these melee matchups, there's a lot of melee matchups like this when there's some kind of unique interaction. There's something like, for example, um, Yasuo's win wall can block the Silas chain. And uh, that's going to be really important for a lot of... A lot of melee versus matchup, melee versus melee matchups is knowing like the kind of intricacies of it and like what kind of interactions and stuff uh, change the matchup. Because otherwise, a lot of them are just about like kind of like stat checks, honestly. Less so than range matchups, but there are still these little interactions. Okay, so Karma actually ganks him from bot side. For some reason the wind wall is bugged in the replay, but he wind walled the um wind walled Karma Q. That was pretty weird. It was nice that he was hugging to his ward there on his top side. That's why he was like safe from that. If he'd been hugging to the other side, Karma probably would have burned his flash there. This is sort of a window where, yes, uh, Silas might be able to win a trade because he does have uh, way more minions and a level advantage. It's a really nice short trade from Caps there though, just to take that and then get out without taking anything in return. I think this is maybe not that great, but let's see. I think he should probably freeze a wave here. See if he does, or maybe he'll push it. I think this is fine actually because um, Silas is pretty low on mana so there's no real kill threat here. Even if Caps takes a lot of damage, the only like actual kill threat comes from, from the jungler. So pushing this back out, um, it's a little risky without any vision but he does have Diana next to him so he's probably fine as long as he kind of leans towards her. Wave goes in, he could probably go for a deep reward. Okay, he's actually in a base. Sort of interesting, I think the reason he's doing this is probably because the opponent has TP. One thing that's quite difficult is if you play... If you play versus a champion with TP and you don't have TP, generally you need a base before them because if, for example, they... Um, oh, by the way, the subscribe thing's not me, by the way. It's, it's just in the video. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so when you play against a champion with TP and you don't, you kind of need a base first because what can happen is, like, um, if you if you try base at the same time as them, sometimes they can base and then TP and freeze a wave, or sometimes they can just base and, um, like, stop you from crashing the wave altogether. Um, so he base first here, he is going to get to freeze the wave, but Silas has TP, so it's not really going to be a problem. Silas burns TP on the mid tower. You guys can see the map, right? Yeah, I always forget if my camera's in the right place. 
But yeah, so it's not as TP's mid. I think Caps can definitely look for extended trades here. Um, even with the creep advantage, I think like at this point, Yasuo should win extended trades like pretty hard. Well, that was actually really smart by Caps. I'll go back and highlight that in a sec. Oh, we took a tower shot. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just go to the start of this trade. So you see here, Silas just used his W and now also uses his E. So basically Silas has no cooldowns, which means it's a really good opportunity to punish. And because as well that um, Yasuo has such good extended trade power, you can just look to trade orders here. Now, what was interesting here is that Silas um, queued himself thinking that Yasuo would EQ him. And I think most Yasuos would do that. But Caps actually waited it out. And, um, and didn't have to take any damage from the Q, so that was quite smart. He did take a tower shot, which is pretty unfortunate, but I think he might be okay, because he gets his wind wall back. And he's almost six as well. I actually think he he doesn't have ignite. It's possible he can kill Silas here when he hits six. It'd be interesting. I don't know if he can kill him before Silas gets the W off, though. It's gonna be close. Ooh, that was pretty annoying. Okay, gets the ult. Okay, Silas hits six. This is very close. <laughs> Pretty cool. Rakan's here. That was another... Ooh. Being quite mechanical in the mid lane here. I think this guy's dead though, right? Ooh, okay. Flashed in. Gets the kill. Okay, so that's really nice, obviously. Um, that was actually like mainly just mechanics. I don't really feel like there was any... Um, I wasn't really a big macro player or like... There wasn't that much game knowledge involved in that. That was just like really well played mechanically. Uh, using the creeps really well and, and that is something that you're definitely gonna have to think about if you are playing one of the more difficult champions like like Yasuo where there is a greater reliance on uh, mechanical ability you there is like on other champs there is like a lot of stuff you can do like being very new to the champ still you know like you could play say Orianna for the first time and if you've played a lot of mages before you'll still be able to like grasp a lot of it and there won't be like obviously there's like skill learning Orianna right She's still reasonably difficult, but it's like more transferable. I'd say Yasuo is a champion that has like less transferable skills, mainly because there just aren't other champions like him. And so you're going to need quite a lot of like upfront, um, like time investment into getting good at Yasuo mechanically. I do think it's not all mechanics though. There is like a, I think one thing is that like a lot of people consider mechanics to be like, I don't know, when people see good skirmishing, sometimes they think mechanics when it might actually be just like good forethought and stuff like that. But sometimes it can be hard to tell. Um, okay, this is this is a done deal. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Basically, um, coming back to lane, Yasuo got the kill, right? So Yasuo has an item advantage, uh, and Yasuo is almost always, I mean, almost level 7, so he's about to have a level advantage as well. Um, so basically, with item and level advantage, looking for a trade is really, really good. His level 7 goes for the alt. There's pretty much no way Silas can win trades, win walls to E and just chases him down. But you can see this is very one-sided, so really good uh, read by Caps there. Like that, like that for example, I'm not sure if you guys would think so, but I don't think that had anything to do with mechanics. I think that was like a really good just like game knowledge, I guess. Like realizes that he is about to have level and item advantage at the same time, and there's like nothing that Silas can do to contest him. Um, so yeah, there are still obviously like aspects of game knowledge, um, but there is a greater like percentage of the skill of the champion will come from like champion mastery or from champion ability. So stays on the map here. One nice thing about Yasuo obviously is he doesn't have any mana costs and he also has like a fair amount of sustain. Um, so he's going to be able to stay on the map for a bit. Um, Yasuo can sustain a lot more than, than other champions because he, um, well one, that he doesn't have any mana, so he can just stay in lane like hitting creeps forever with his Doran's Blade, um, and also he can tank extra damage with his Wind Wall, so that kind of like helps keep him in the lane for longer. So we're gonna look for a base here, this is fine because it's on a cannon wave, like there's no way Silas with his low wave clear can crash this cannon wave before Yasuo gets back. Um, just gonna speed this up. So you can see he comes on the map here, and even though Silas uh, was pushing this wave the whole time, it looks like it's just gonna come right to Yasuo here. So it's really good base timing. Hmm. Yeah, really good base timing here. I think I only missed one creep on that wave, which was the melee creep, which is absolutely fine. Only losing one creep on a base is, is really, really nice. And also he got like all that play goal before. But I imagine just like, there's not much point freezing or doing anything like that now. Might as well just like fast push, fast push waves. Um, can maybe look to take jungle camps or something here. Is he going to run top or run raptors? Looks like he's going to run top. So Zillion died, uh, which gives Caps an up. Oh, okay. Going to go back bed. I actually thought he was going to full commit to that, but I think... Zillion probably pinged that he had TP and maybe wants to TP to that top tower, but let's see. 
actually not sure now because okay zillion's being bought i'm not sure why caps didn't go farm that wave there but anyway back to mid lane i think like he okay he's running down the skirmish i think this is a little unnecessary as well but um yeah i think this would have been one even without him but i mean he can come get this one kill right I think the better play here honestly would have been to just push mid and like take the enemy raptors and maybe take the mid tower um but i don't really mind that either because i think like there there is a chance that like maybe, maybe not in that fight but if you're not sure the enemy team might might win a team fight or might win an early skirmish like this it could get them like pretty back into the game um but i think didn't really need to do that overall and probably could have got more gold um just by doing this i think also one thing in general when you're playing champs like um yeah so that people don't normally talk about is you have such good wave clear and such good like ability to kill camps that you can actually just like power farm oh my god he played that well you can um you can farm really really quick like farm mid wave farm raptors farm scuttle crabs farm everything like that i think uh leeson played that really really well also is a bit greedy by cast but it's not really a death uh that matters so gonna uh come out of base here looks like still going mid zaya hasn't swapped yet the push is in this wave i think there's um he probably wants to make plays either with diana here or with rakan maybe going for a solo kill yep i think he gets him right yeah that, that was pretty nicely played again i feel like that was pretty nice uh, game knowledge maybe we could kill silas there it wasn't really any mechanical part to it uh, honestly the game looks really really over but let's see kind of how he snowballs his advantage for the rest of the game because i don't think there's going to be much uh chat possibility they could lose but there's still like things you can do they use this mid prior here to come take these walls this is like definitely what you want to do on on champs that farm jungle camps quickly especially ones that don't have any mana um because there's basically no investment other than time for you to come and kill these camps so you can always just like go and aoe like uh wolves raptors really quickly um also a lot of these champions that do excel at like farming quickly so like your aurelias lucians yon yasur uh, a lot of them really do need to be kind of like ahead in order to be in order to be good you know like if you're just even like zero zero as yasur like not that good on cs um it can be very difficult for you to play team fights and skirmishes but if you manage to get all the um if you manage to get even just like ahead in levels from farming um ahead in gold obviously from farming camps and stuff it can make the game a lot easier i see a lot of people like struggling to team fight and stuff on on these sort of champions and like when i'm seeing it they're just like they're too behind or like too even to be team fighting you know like you, you guys have probably been on the other side of this but when when you play against say like a fed aurelia or a fed yas or something they're actually like they're really tanky you know um, they're, they're really quite hard to kill but on the other hand if you play against one that's just even uh, doesn't have level advantage doesn't really have um you know a, a big gold advantage like that they're very easy to deal with so a huge amount of like playing these champions is like getting ahead and staying ahead and caps is doing that really well at the moment like you can see he's um like on the clock for cs he's gotten a lot of kills he's gotten all those tower plays from mid and he's also found quite a few jungle camps so um yeah he's like high on gold high on xp which makes him really really strong and hard to deal with also when you get the shield bow it makes it a lot easier to farm camps because as we said before pretty much the only investment when you go for camps as one of these farming champs is time but um there is like a little bit of a health component but once you get like a mortal shield bow or whatever you don't really have to worry about that anymore you could probably take this red before basing if you wanted to but decides to base he grabs the mortal reminder second i think um pretty good buy honestly like i obviously is more damage uh but they have a lot of healing in their team like the stylus leads in with gore drinker um jace a little bit so i like the buy overall i think it's good gonna come on the map here and probably go straight to bot lane i imagine um yeah probably gonna run straight to bot lane i think he can sh shove this in like really easily there's basically no one that can contest him in this side wave and also like to just say it again like if you're playing these champions with a really high wave clear you can you can create a, like a, a really large like time advantage for your team sort of like a tempo advantage it only takes you say like 30 seconds to to clear like these waves or maybe even less um but versus a champion with low wave clear like silas it can take them a lot lot longer to clear them so you see like silas especially when he's this far behind would take absolutely ages 
um, to, to clear this while well, Yasuo can do other stuff. But actually going to go for another dive. So we're playing really, really aggressive. Windwall's the, um, Windwall's the chain. Very nice. And he's probably going to be able to lifesteal a fair amount of this back up. I don't think Karma can kill him. Ooh. Yeah, he kind of had to do that, actually. That was a pretty smart ult. I think after he got hit by the Q, he kind of had to ult. Oh. He tried to flash in to, to get killed so the Zillion ult could proc, but I think actually if he didn't flash, if he ran towards the tower, the tower shot would have proc the Zillion ult. So, that's a bit unlucky. Uh, well, this game looks really, really over, honestly. Let's see what he does out of base. Maybe farm a camp on the way or could just run straight top. So, gonna run straight top, looks like, and take this tower probably. Um, there's, there's, again, no one that can really contest him in the side lane. And also in team fights, they can't really be contested either. They have like a 16 kill Diana. Yes, for Diana, super strong combo. And then they got the Rakan as well. So really, really, really strong. Looks like this tower dies probably on the next wave, but not right now. I think Caps could probably go and farm the Gromp here, but he's going to get chased. Let's see if he can outplay this. This looks pretty hard though. There's a lot of people here. Okay. He's 1v5 at the moment. Yeah, he got stunned. Or snared or whatever. Okay, he's still alive. Okay, yeah. This is honestly sort of what I was saying before, where like, you know, if you're even as Yasu in this sort of situation, you just die. But because he's like actually reasonably tanky, he's got the shield bow, he's got the chain vest, and also his opponents just like aren't that strong, right? Like they're sort of behind. Um, and he's level 13. There's like all this stuff kind of going for him that makes it so team fighting is like a lot easier than it is normally. And so yeah, I guess if there's something for you guys to take away from this sort of game, it's it's how important like farming and like staying ahead on these champs are. Because like just playing the game from an even state is really, really difficult. I also think there was like some pretty good stuff about like the laning phase in this in this matchup, like how he got ahead. Um I do think Yasuo is pretty good against Silas, but it's definitely not like a it's not one sided, you know. There's a lot of people actually that would probably pick Silas and Yasuo, although personally I think it's pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I think another thing maybe is that, um, Yasuo as a counter pick is really, really nice. Like if you, like, because you need to get ahead and extend those leads in lane, um, making sure you get a matchup where you can do that is quite good. Like if you verse an AFK wave clear champion, like say you verse like a Nivea, it's going to be really, really hard for you to snowball anything and she kind of counters you in team fights. So even if you went like, even in this matchup, I could see it being like quite difficult for you. Uh, and the rest of the game and then finally there's like the aspect of the enemy team having really low cc like if you look at them there's no like leona there's no nautilus not like an orn you know there's just like not really champs that can deal with you um the cc on this team is is largely like wind wallable for example like the silas chain i guess like that's the only one really i guess maybe like karma's q slow um jinx slow but yeah that was it for this uh video guys a bit of a shorter one just wanted to kind of get something out there on yasuo because i know a lot of you guys um play it and i also don't think there's that much content out there in general on yasuo simply put because like not that many people play them i think other than like pure one tricks um so yeah hopefully that helped guys if there are any questions go ahead and leave them below and uh, i'll see you guys next time